Today's video is in your 1D Intro to Proportional Thinking Packet. And yes, we're going to talk about proportions. So the problem of the day here on page 1, you can determine if two ratios are equivalent by looking at both of them in their simplest form or by simplifying. So 4 to 8 and 5 to 10 both reduce to a 1 to 2 ratio. So they are equivalent ratios, 4 eighths and 5 tenths both equal 1 half. 4 to 6 and 6 to 9 also can both be reduced to a 2 to 3 ratio. So they are equivalent ratios. However, there are other ways to know if ratios are equivalent. Discuss with your partner and see if you can find any other numeric relations between the ratios shown below. Hint, there is something that is the same when ratios are equivalent. Look at the numbers and how they compare across the fractions. So, well, you don't have partners because we're doing this in a video. The hint is that if you multiply the cross products, and some people draw this thing that kind of looks like a butterfly, um, and the product of the means, uh, which is 8 times 5, equals the product of the extremes, which is 4 times 10. This is, yes, we know they both reduce to one half, but the product of the means, the cross products, will also equal each other because I get 40 equals 40. Same with 4 to 6 and 6 to 9. 6 times 6, that's 36. And 4 times 9, that's also 36. So the cross products, the, what's called the product of the means does equal the product of the extremes. That's also true when um, ratios are equivalent. The opposite must also be true. 2 to 5 is not equivalent to 4 to 7 because if they are simplified, they are not equal. And 2 to 5 and 4 to 7 they're not going to be equal because 7 times 2, or 2 times 7 is 14, and 4 times 5, they are not the same cross product. They do not equal each other. So I did the problem of the day for you. A proportion is a statement that says the two ratios are equal. If a heart beats eight times every five seconds, then it should beat 24 times every 15 seconds. Multiplying both parts of the ratio by three, you would get that 24 times in 15 seconds. So yes, eight times 15, which is... Uh, 120 is the same as 5 times 24, which is also 120. So the product of the means does equal the product of the extremes. Or you could write it 8 to 5 is the same ratio as 24 to 15 with a semicolon. Or 8 to 5 equals 24 to 15 in the English language. In the proportion, 3 eighths equals 6 sixteenths. 3 times 16 and 6 times 8 are called those cross products. In a proportion, the cross products are always equal. And I always say the product, a true math teacher says it this way, the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And the means and the extremes are positions within the ratio. So tell which ratios form a proportion. Use the cross product test. So the product of the means here in uh, the first one, 7 times 20. Those are the means. 
Because if I wrote them like this, they're kind of in the middle of the ratio. Here's the means. Here's the extremes. They're on the ends. So that's why it's called the product of the means equals the product of the extremes. And yes, 7 times 20, which is 140, does equal 4 times 35, which is 140. So yes, um, use the cross part. Tell which ratios form a proportion. This answer for number one is yes, they do. The product of the means does equal the product of the extremes. And uh, number two, the product of the means 2 times 16, that's 32. And 3 times 10, oh, they don't equal each other. So this answer is no. The product of the means in number three, 24 times 15, that's 360. And 9 times 40, oh, yep, that's 360. So that is a true statement. This is a proportion. These ratios do form a proportional relationship. In the last one, number four, the product of the means 20 times 20. Well, I know this one's going to be a no because 20 and 20 end in a zero, so that's going to be 400. And 32 and 12 both end in two, so that answer is going to end in a four, which is 384. They do not equal to each other, the product of the means, 400. And the product, multiplying, 12 times 32 equals 384. The product of the extremes, they do not equal each other. So, no, they do not form a proportional relationship. You can use what you know about cross products to solve a proportion. So what number n over 6 is in the same ratio as 14 to 4? Well, find the cross products. So the product of means 6 times 14 has to equal the product of the extremes 4 times n. Well, 6 times 14, that's 84, has to equal 4 n's. If I divide by 4 on both sides, I'm going to get that that is 21 equals that n. Uh, find the cross product. So 5 times 8, that's 40, has to equal 12 times n. Well, if I divide 40 by 12, I'm going to get that n equals 40 divided by 12. Uh, that's, if I take a 4 out of both of those, I get 10 thirds. 10 thirds is 3 and 1 third. I can reduce that to 10 thirds, that's in lowest terms, which is the same thing as 3 and 1 third is n. So 3 and 1 third is to 5, this is what this is saying, 3 and 1 third is to 5 as 8 is to 12. They're in the same ratio. That's what proportions tell us. Next page. Proportional thinking. Sometimes you can solve a problem by writing a proportion. Proportional thinking. The key math skill that I promise you will use more than any other math skill in your life. Sometimes you can solve a problem by writing a proportion. There are three boys for every two girls at the Oak Hill Middle School. If there are 70 seventh grade girls, how many 7th grade boys do you think there are? You know the ratio of boys to girls is 3 to 2. Well, that has to equal the ratio of I don't know how many boys to 70 girls. So the cross products, product of the means, 2 times n, you can see it here, that's 2n, has to equal the product of the extremes, 3 times 70, which is 210. To solve that, I would divide by 2 and I get, oh, there must be 105 boys. And yes, you can check, is 3 to 2 the same thing as 105 to 70? Well, 2 times 105 is 210. 3 times 70 is 210. So yes, that's true. In a bag of mixed nuts, there are six peanuts for every cashews. How many cashews are there if there are 225 peanuts? So you have to set up the proportion so that it's consistent. Notice the labels, the ratio labels here. Peanuts to cashews, six 
to 4. So P naughts in the second ratio has to be in the numerator position. If there are 225 of those P naughts, how many cashews? I don't know. I'm going to put N or X or C for cashews. Doesn't really matter. So 4 times 225 has to equal, product of the means has to equal the product of the extreme, 6 times N. Well, 4 times 225 is 900. Has to equal 6 times what number? I don't know. I'll divide by 6 to figure that out. And you get 150 has to equal those nuts or those cashews. So there must be 150 cashews in that mix. Always seems to be more peanuts than cashews in mixed nuts. Number two, in a taste test between two brands of bottled water, four out of every five people preferred brand A to brand B. How many people took the test if 88 people preferred brand A? Oh, how many people took the test? Doesn't say how many people like brand B. Hmm? Doesn't say that. How many people took the test? So I need a total number here, which is why you can see the word ratio says brand A to the total. Oh, if four out of every five people, so four out of every five, five was the total people. How many people took the test if 88 people preferred brand A? Well, brand A was 88. So how many people preferred brand B or the or totals? Right? How many total? Ah, how many total people were there? Maybe I'll use T for total. So 5 times 88 has to equal 4 times T. Well, 5 times 88, that's 440, equals 4 times some number T, the total. Well, I'm going to divide by 4 to get that answer. Then I get 110 has to equal that total, right? 110 total people. Number three, solve by writing the proportion. Notice they didn't set the word ratios up for us, so I'm going to do that. There are three containers of yogurt that cost $1.29. How much do two containers cost? Okay, so $1.29, I'm going to put the money on the top, for three containers, and I'll put a C there, money over containers has to equal money over containers. Well, I know I want it to go down to two. What is that cost? So I'm going to just use an X. So three times X has to equal two times $1.29, which is $2.58. Well, if I divide by three, 258 divided by three, that will give me the answer for what my X is. And that comes out to be 86 cents. So if three containers cost $1.29, two containers cost 86 cents. I'm not fully sabling these, by the way. For every two black bottle caps in a contest, there are three caps with winning numbers. Oh, blank, not black, blank. Three caps with winning numbers printed on them. How many blank caps are there in a case of bottles that contain 42 winning caps? Mm. For every two blank, so blank over winning. Maybe BK for blank. Blank over winning, so that's a 2 to 3 ratio. How many blank? Oh, I don't know blank, so that would be on the top. And winning would be on the bottom to be consistent. So my 3 times x, the product of the, my means, has to equal the product of the extremes, 2 times 42, which is 84. If I divide 84 by 3, I'm going to get the right answer. And x must equal 28. 28, yes, 28 times 3 is 84. 
So there must be how many blank caps? 28 blank caps would be the correct answer here. So 2 to 3 is the same ratio as 28 to 42. And that's it for today's video.